Okay, hey everyone, this is Carl Battams here from Naval Research Lab, Space Science Division. Uh, we are here this week at the American Geophysical Union meeting in San Francisco. Um, I'm at the Naval Research Lab booth where we're basically um, promoting all of the great work we do in the lab, with a whole broad range of stuff that we're involved in. Now me personally, I'm in a solar and heliospheric physics group, so we study the sun and essentially the way the sun influences Earth in form of space weather. And uh, so one of the cool things that I do in relation to like space weather studies is studying these things. Now, some of you may follow me on Twitter, so you know that I talk about this stuff all the time. Um, but I want to show a few movies and just talk about some of the, the cool science that comes from these sun grazing comets. Everything here is completely unscripted, by the way, so if I mess up, um, just enjoy. So, Sun Grazer Project is a project that I'm involved in. It's a NASA-funded citizen science project. Uh, we've been operating it at NRL since 2003. And essentially, it allows anyone with an internet connection to download images from the uh, ESA, NASA, SOHO satellite and look for comets in those images and they can report them to us and then they can get credit for discovering the comet. It's an amazing project that since it began in like 95, we've discovered over 3,200 new comets. So that's way more than half of all known comets have come through our project. So it's a, it's a really awesome thing that we've got going on. So that's something I'm talking about uh, like later today at the meeting. I've got a, a citizen science talk that I'm giving. I don't want to show a few movies of what we do. This is a coronagraph camera. So this is our Lasco coronagraph. So essentially you're looking at a region of space through a telescope and we block the sun with this solid disc. That blocks the direct sunlight so you're not like blinded by the sun. And then that means we can see all of the eruptions that are going on around the sun. And like in this movie, for example, what you're seeing here is Comet Lovejoy, which some of you may remember from 2011. It's a bright sun grazing comet that flew past the sun. Um, looks like it kind of survived passing the sun. It sort of survived, it sort of didn't. It, um, so much of its like ices got burned off when it went near the sun. It actually fell apart a few weeks later, but it was a, a spectacular object. And, it's chronographs like these that allow us to capture images of comets like this because like normally from the ground you can't see a comet that's right next to the sun. We see the sun in the daytime, it's up high in the sky, you can't look for comets next to the sun, it's too bright. But with a telescope like this, you can look for comets, in fact this is the only way you can look for comets close to the sun. Now this particular one, um, there was a huge amount of science that came out of this and this generally goes for all of the, the sun grazing comets actually. They're kind of a, um, like a double-sided coin in terms of the science benefit. So if you're a comet scientist then you can study these comets and you can learn about comets fragmenting and their orbits and their evolution and their brightness and their tails and all this cool jazz that comets have going on. But as I said, I work for Naval Research Lab, where we support the, the US Navy with basic research. So, what do we have to do with comets? Well, it turns out these things, as they go past the sun, they are essentially like probes of the near sun conditions. And they're very unique probes. And let me show you an example. This is a movie of Again, you've got Comet Lovejoy. So that comet I was just showing you, this is actual data from the NASA SDO satellite. It's a EUV images. So you're looking at the solar atmosphere at like one and a half million degrees. So you've got super, super hot solar atmosphere. And then we see Comet Lovejoy. It's flying in towards the sun. And I mean, hopefully this is coming across on the video. But when you look closely, what you see are like all these little striations, all these little bright lines in the, the sun's corona, and they're all kind of wibbly wobbly all over the place. We'd never seen anything like this before. Like this was super cool. We were we were freaked out and happy as scientists. 
But basically what's going on here, you've got a comet that's going past the sun. Comets are basically just big balls of rock and ice all mushed together. As they go past the sun, they do what you'd expect. The ice just begins to melt, that lifts off dust and other chunks of stuff and you end up with this trail like this trail of particles behind the comet. Now you stick that really close to the sun where you've got insane amounts of solar radiation and what's happening is all these dust particles that are coming off they're getting hit with this radiation and they're getting atomized really quickly like within minutes they're just getting ripped apart into their constituent atoms and then these atoms undergo like this ionization process they um, essentially they're getting heated up so what's going on is you've got dust atom you've got atoms from the dust is getting heated up to coronal temperatures and then it's clinging to magnetic field lines around the sun the sun is a huge big tangled mess of magnetic field lines a lot of which we can see like the, the loops on this movie they're the magnetic field lines that you can actually see on the sun but there's a lot that we can't see when this comet went through the solar corona it actually illuminated these magnetic field lines and that's a really incredibly rare and science rich event for us to study when we like see for the first time these field lines illuminating there's a whole bunch of other science that came from this too but the bottom line is that you uh, you send a comet into the solar corona and it acts like a probe. It's, it's a probe that we can't afford to send there. It's not practical to keep sending spacecraft to the sun. Like, no one can afford that. But we can look at these things and do it and we get to see the way they interact with the sun. Um, I'm going to roll through a couple more movies and there's another one coming up that shows another aspect of how the, the comets interact with the sun. But... Um, before I get into that, I want to just just back up a minute. Now, I was talking about the Sun Grazer project, the citizen science thing that allows us to discover lots of comets. And um, to date, we've discovered 3,200 and some comets, which is just remarkable. Now, this is a visualization of the first 2,000 of SOHO's 3,000 and some comet discoveries. It was produced by um, Tom Bridgman at the uh, NASA Goddard. Um, he and I worked together. And we've got this visualization of the orbits of the first 2,000 comets. And one of the things you'll notice straight away is like all of these red ones down here. These are the sun grazers. These all belong to one family of comets um, that broke up. It's a, a big parent comet broke up like thousands of years ago and left essentially this trail of debris in space. And so you're seeing all of these fragments pouring into the sun and getting vaporized as they get there. And that's like 85%-ish of Soho's comets belong to this Kreutz group. Then you're seeing some other little colored lines flying in. Um, green ones are the Maya group. That's a family of comets that was discovered purely through this project, purely through our satellite. We had no idea it was there until now. Same with the purple ones and the blue ones, the Marsden and the Kraut group comets. We had no idea those families existed. The yellow lines that you see, they're what we call non-group comets. Those are objects that don't belong to any family any like known population of comets but I mean it, you get the idea the point is that because of this really unique telescope on this fantastic satellite and this wonderful citizen science program that we've got going on we've been able to produce this huge huge volume of comet discoveries that there is no other way we would have like been able to discover them basically I mean this if it wasn't for the Sun Grazer project if it wasn't for Soho and Lasco this would be a very boring two minutes of this little Facebook broadcast um, you can see that the inner solar system is just rich with stuff that's flying around the Sun um, and it's cool. Like it's a, it's a cool project to be involved in on my side, the science side. It's a cool project for the, the amateur astronomers that get involved in and actually do the comet hunting. So it's a, it's a wonderful effort that we have going on. 
Now I'm gonna roll through. Uh, I'm gonna shoot through just a, a couple more movies. This is Comet Ice On. Again, those of you that follow me on um, online on Twitter, you'll remember Comet Ice On. That was the the, the big disappointment of 2013. Um, Thanksgiving Day. This big sun grazing comet that the media had been hyping relentlessly for like a year flew past the sun on Thanksgiving Day and much to the bitter disappointment of everyone it basically fell apart. So you see Ison flying in and then as it comes out on the other side of the sun it looks very different now to how it did before and essentially this movie's being jumpy, I apologise. Essentially what you're left with is just a dust cloud. Because ice on basically, it just completely vaporised. Now, I've got a better movie. All right. This is another one of our cameras. This is the heliospheric imager. It's another NRL camera. It's flying on the NASA Stereo A satellite. You've got basically a 20 degree region of space. The sun is outside of the field of view. The sun is kind of over here. Um, this spacecraft is on the other side of the solar system. So you've got Earth there, Mercury, and then you see Comet Ison. Now with this movie, um, I do a lot of image processing. I did some cool image pro processing into this. And when you fiddle around with those images a little bit, you get something that looks like this, which is way more cool and dramatic. Again, there's Earth, Mercury, Comet Ison, and you can see that Comet Ison's tail, and in a minute, Comet Enki as well, its tail just starts going crazy in the solar wind. Like, it goes nuts. Huge coronal mass ejection coming through. This tail starts going crazy. This is one of the second big benefits to solar physics and solar studies for looking at these sun grazing comets. It, they're basically like a, a wind sock that's sitting there in the solar wind, reacting to the solar wind that's flowing out of the sun, and we can use them as probes. We can measure the speeds of the solar wind, people have looked for like turbulence. There's a lot of information that we can get from the viewing the comet tails as they react to the solar wind, and then in turn we can help the predictions and the modeling of the solar wind try and understand how that affects us at Earth. So it all feeds into kind of the big picture of um, like space weather prediction and analysis. And that's, I mean, that's kind of one of the, the core missions of our heliospheric group at, at NRL to understand how the sun is um, affecting and impacting Earth. And so, this is just one of the just one of the cool little ways that we do that. It's, it doesn't give us all the answers, but it gives us just a couple of extra little pieces in this big puzzle that we're we're trying to put together to really unravel this mystery in the, the sciences. So I think okay, one more movie. This really doesn't relate to the other ones. But coming down here, this is from 2002. Right. Another little comet that we saw um, fly up around the sun. This is another one you'll see that towards the end of the movie, it suddenly fades very quickly. Another example of a, a comet that just got too close to the sun, completely vaporized, completely gone. No one knew it was coming. And if it wasn't for our cameras, we wouldn't have even seen it there like this is the only way that we can view these things and we're still doing it um, Soho satellite is 20 I think it's in its 22nd year of a two-year mission so it's it's overrun a bit which is wonderful we're getting so much science out of it still and um, we're still actively hunting for comets on a daily basis and I guess we'll keep mining them for information as it goes along. Um, so that's the basic overview. Um, I'm not going to harp on too much longer. Um, just wanted to give you like an idea of some of the kind of the cool novel research we have going on at the lab. Now we're here all week at the AGU. Um, a little bit later this afternoon, if you kind of stick tight to the NRL Facebook page, and I'll post it online too, um, we're doing another talk later on with some other scientists who are developing um, uh, an instrument called MITEI, which is going to fly on the NASA ICON 
satellite, and that's going to be one that's measuring um, like winds, like way high up in the um, Earth's upper atmosphere, and that again has ties to like uh, space weather and stuff. So um, hang close to Facebook and check that out later because that's, that's some really cool stuff. Um, but otherwise, that's uh, I guess I'll sign off for now, and I appreciate you all watching and uh, keep checking back. Thanks.